The tool I'm going to show you today is a bit advanced. It is a budget categorizer. Every month I download a QIF file from the bank. QIF is for Quicken Interchange Format. Oddly enough, Quicken itself doesn't use this format anymore, but most uh, accounting programs and banks do support it. I use Home Bank for my accounting. It's highly recommended. It's made in France and it's open source. I'm not sure if it runs in Windows. I know it runs in Linux. I could import the QIF file into Home Bank and manually assign the budget categories, but it takes a long time and there's so much clicking involved that I, I worry for repetitive strain injuries. It's three clicks to scroll to find the right budget item and three more clicks per transaction. And this month there are 121 transactions. Now assuming we take around 30 seconds per transaction, it would take an hour to do this manually for this month. Now the file I'm going to show you isn't my real QIF file and nor is the code got the right numbers in it because no one needs to know my financials out there in YouTube land. But I want to show you this mock-up so you can see a typical month's workflow. So I've already downloaded the file and here we go. And I start this process with a shell script. And here that script is. It uh, takes the current pcbanking.qif file that I've downloaded and names it according to today's date and then loads it in Emacs. Uh, I do have a version of this utility that runs in common list, but honestly the Emacs one is just as good and probably a bit easier to do. Uh, it takes a little longer to run, but we're talking seconds, so it's not that big a deal. So let's run Manage QIF. And so it opens the utility source code up here in the top window and opens the actual QAF file down here. And so what I would do is run categorize. You have to spell it properly. And there it is categorized. So it has added this information at the top of the file to identify my bank account to uh, to home bank. I don't go to First National Bank, of course. I told you this is all fake, right? So, uh, the L line wasn't there before. That's where the budget category goes. And so, monthly fees is set up in my vendor categories. There it is. When I get a line where the P value was monthly fees. Then I run a function called payments with the argument bank fees. And we'll show you how all that works in a little while. Now, in terms of the actual workflow, what I need to look for at this point is for things that came out with unknown vendor or unknown category. And the way I look for that is I just do um, a search for unknown. So I have an unknown vendor, Silvery Moon. Uh, most of my unknown vendors are restaurants because we go and try new restaurants for fun. So what do we do when we have a new vendor? Well, we add them to this list. And I only need to add part of the name, just enough of the name so that it is probably unique. And this is a same category as an A&W. <laughs> it's a restaurant. So I'm just going to take the rest of the line from there. Now Silvery Moon is added to the list. Do I have any more unknowns down here? Yes, Cheers Beverage Room, and guess what? It is also a new place that we tried for breakfast. So we'll add it as well. 
it's basically the same thing again. It's a uh, personal dining, lunches, and restaurants item. Do we have any more unknowns? No more unknowns. So, we have now updated our vendor category list. And I can just use undo to undo all of the changes to the file and recategorize. Now, I like to keep an ordered list in here. So what I do is I uh, highlight the whole, the whole list of vendor categories except for the last one. There's a long list of vendor categories. I don't do the last one because it has to have more closing parentheses than the others. I just run sort lines on it. And so now my list of vendors is sorted again. And uh, let's see where to go. There's the tiers right there. So, we save this. We byte compile and load. And now, we recategorize. Final error message there. There's probably a, a blank line or something in the input file, and it's okay. It doesn't stop anything from working. Um, I will. Uh, shouldn't save that file just yet. I should check for unknowns again, just to be sure. And there are none. So now, I'll save the file. And that's done for the month. Just like that. Now, let's get into the code a little bit. So here's our enormous list of vendor categories. And here you see that these are function calls. The major categories are uh, living and personal and housing and transportation and payments. And then there are functions for specific situations. Like when I go to my car repair place, there's a special function, uh, repair or maint. And that takes the amount as a parameter. Let's go down a little bit lower and see how these functions work. <coughs> so as I was mentioning the main budget categories, these are validators. So these are the a list of the valid categories for housing. <coughs> and if it isn't one of those, it's an unknown housing category and it will show up when I look for the term unknown in my processed QIF file. So there's housing and there's income. I took all the income items out of the QIF file. Insurance, living, medical, uh, non-discretionary. Where did I get these categories from? I got them from um, Price Waterhouse Coopers. And I added a few of my own after that. Uh, payments, personal items, and transportation. I have a little bit of calculation support stuff here. This is a cool function. It's not mine, except for this line here, which had to be adapted for Emacs. Uh, this one is done by uh, Gerald Dussault, I guess his name is. And it gives you the day of week for any day, month, and year uh, after 1752. So, here are my calculated categorizations. This is kind of interesting. I'll give you a few examples of this. Well, I guess I, I could go through them all. Um, 
this ABM withdrawal is kind of a mock-up. So if the day is Sunday, which means day of week returns zero, and the amount is one of these amounts, then it knows that this was a, uh, a church giving thing, or it was an other. And you can obviously go and modify the file manually because you're in a text editor already for when you know <coughs> a, a different category should apply. On gas stations, when I go to a gas station, I think if the amount is uh, is uh, less than twenty dollars, which is this is how this works out because we're uh, in a QIF file. If you spent something, it's a minus amount. Um, if the amount's less than twenty dollars, it's probably buying a snack. So I lump it under food and grocery. If it's over twenty dollars or equal to twenty dollars, I assume it's gas. So in Lisp, the if statements work like this. <clears throat> If the amount is that, do this, otherwise do that. And so uh, um, that's how that works. So what that does, it calls, if we're buying gas, it calls the transportation function up here. There it is, with the category gas. And it, it um, validates the category and then gives it transportation colon gas as the uh, as the category that it's going to use when it uh, modifies the QIF file. So let's see, there's uh, child support, which uh, breaks down into uh, child support payments and child care. So let's say you were paying 800 a month for child support uh, and a different amount comes through, then that would get recorded as child care. So that's a good way of separating those things. Um, we don't actually have rental income, <laughs> but uh, let's say we had a rental income where we would deposit a check for four hundred dollars, say from our from our people. Well, then the uh, if the amount is four hundred dollars, then we record it as rental income using the income function. Otherwise, it's a personal other, and if you need to, you can change the amount if it's not regular. Repair or mate. Um, when I get an oil change, it's under $80. If you're watching this 20 years from now, uh, this may be quite low, <laughs> what you expect. But if the amount is, uh, uh, is uh, more than $80 that we spent, uh, it's going to be a repair. And those are both transportation categories, but this divides them up. <clears throat> I could write any number of functions that I want. Uh, this is all the ones I've come up with so far, but I could write any number of functions and just compile it and away we go and just call the functions from in here. Now this is something that's pretty cool that very few languages can do. Uh, I know that Python can do it. I think I can do it with PowerShell maybe. Uh, I can definitely do it with Lisp. And that is call a function that's in a string not everything does that. I think PHP can do that because that's how people break PHP. But this is not something that interfaces to the uh, outside world via the internet. We're down to the main drivers, the driver functions. This is where I configure my account name. As I mentioned, it's a fake account name. And I set up some global variables for the things that are interesting that I need to be able to pass to other functions. Common Lisp definitely needs these as, as globals. I'm not entirely sure that Lisp does, or uh, Emacs Lisp does, but might as well. It, it's compatible. So the vendor, the amount, the transaction month, the transaction day, transaction year. So these are kind of supporting functions here. I won't go into them in too much detail. This just takes a date and moves it into the globals. Uh, that's a lot easier to do in Emacs, incidentally, than it is in Common Lisp. Uh, this sets the global transaction amount. <clears throat> this gets the record type. Um, if we look at the QIF file again. Oh. What day was it again? Uh, 28. This 
character here that starts the line is the record type. Okay. That switch back. Getting the record type is just taking the the substring of the record for one character. <clears throat> Getting the rest of the record is one plus the line beginning position to line end position. We take a substring of that. Okay. Uh, because Emacs the text editor doesn't actually have a string search function that I could find, so I implemented my own really quick. Um, I would like to say it was really quick, but it, it took some head scratching to get it just right. And we'll get into that in any detail. But here's the cool stuff. Now we're getting down to the cool stuff. This is a sign category. So it creates a variable for the budget category, and that does a list of the vendor categories. Remember, vendor categories is the function up at the top, this line 380. This is the function that I'm calling here, the vendor categories function. Let's go back to line 380. So that's the list, the list it's going through at this point. So for each item in the list, it sees if the vendor name is in the uh, the vendor name from the QIF file. And if it is, it does this neat little function. What that does, it's executing the string of code. So, uh, regular, uh, a common list doesn't need the car car just means it only returns the first item from this function call but emacs needs it and car is a uh, it's sort of an obsolete term it's been replaced with first for the most part um, for first item from the from the list of possible return values so if that doesn't find a vendor it will return unknown vendor as we saw when we looked at the QIF file. Now, if, if it calls one of these functions, like this one, okay, like living, got a few living items here, living. If it doesn't get one of these, proper categories. It's going to return unknown living category at that point. And so that means if if the category is set up wrong in the code, you'll know and you'll be able to change it or you'll have to add the category to this function that I'm in right now. Let's see, we're around 380. And that's all that does this just writes the header with my custom account name that I configured up above. And this is the real meat of it. This process is a single QIF record. So this let assigns the record type from the get record type function to our variable called record type and assigns the record data to the get record uh, or from the get record function. So if it's a D, let's take a look at the actual file while we do this. If it's a D, right, that means it's a date. So we call the handle transaction date function. I didn't need to get record there. I can make that much more efficient. Hmm. Just a moment. Okay, if it's a D, we call the handle transaction date function with the record data. If we, if it's a T, 
That's the transaction amount. And we handle the transaction amount with that function. If we get a P, that's the vendor we set up. Okay? And that's what we are searching on when we look for the right code to apply. And then when we reach an M, that means the next line can be an L. So we go ahead one line, we insert the L, we insert the result from a sign category, and then insert a new line. To categorize all the items in the file, this is the main function that I actually run. It saves excursion, which means it doesn't let the cursor fly all over the place. You're going to end up with your cursor in the same place you started. It goes to the top character of the file. It writes the header with my custom account name. Then it goes through each line until forward line stops working and calls the process QIF record function, which is this one right here. And that's all there is to that. I thought of two more things I wanted to have, and unfortunately, I uh, wasn't recording when I wrote them. So, <laughs> my first attempt to get this uh, didn't work out. Uh, it occurred to me that I've been relying on undo to undo the work done to a file, but um, it's not really quite enough because if you reopen a file or you reopen Emacs, uh, you don't have the undo information and you still may need to decategorize a file. Let me try that word again, decategorize. So um, what I've done for that is um, I have this function called decategorize. I call it. It makes sure that this line here has been put in because that means I've categorized it. And then it will uh, go back to the start, move ahead one character, search to find this, the next uh, exclamation mark which is this one here that I've just highlighted with the cursor. It'll go to the beginning of that line, and then it will delete region 1 to point, which is the current position back to 1, and just remove that stuff. And then, while it finds L's, uh, this is, uh, caret means from start of line, and L is the, uh, the, um, the place where we put our budget categorization, the record type, it'll kill that whole line. So let's just uh, see this decategorize the file. And there it is. It's back to the beginning. Right now I have an undo buffer so I can undo that. Um, and then I thought instead of uh, if you've made a mistake or something, instead of um, decategorizing in one step and then categorizing again in the second step, it'd be nice to have a convenience function just to call the decategorize and then recategorize. So we might not even see a difference here because it'll go by so fast. Yeah, and so it has gone through the file and recategorized it again. And that could come in handy if you find that uh, you've assigned the wrong category to a vendor. So I think that's all I'm going to do with this right now. I uh, hope you found it interesting. Um, it's uh, an endeavor to do this, but it's much easier on me than uh, doing it by hand for an hour a month or longer. Thanks for watching.